welcome back. And right now, we are going to check out another tool that is used for generating payloads. And that tool is called Whale. Since it is not installed in Kali Linux by default, we must install it first. To do that, you can open up your terminal, enter the root account by typing in your password after the sudo su, and then after it, you want to type the command apt-get install whale. Now, since I already have whale installed, this will not do anything for me. But for you, it should start the process of installing whale. And that process might take some time. However, running this command is only the first part. After this installation finishes, you can clear the screen and type whale inside of your root terminal. This will, for me, open up the whale program, but for you, it will continue the process of installation. So, whale has a bunch of dependencies, and once you run the apt-get install whale, and after it you run the whale program for the first time, it will ask you to install those dependencies. You want to click there yes, and that process will also take some time. It will also have a bunch of pop-up windows right here, where you want to click on next, 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 next on each one, you don't want to change any of those settings, and after all the installation has finished, you should have whale up and running. Okay, great. After you get whale up and running, we can see right here that we get two available tools. The first one is Vision, and the second one is Ordnance. And what whale is, is simply a program that will allow us to generate payloads similarly to the MSF one -on. So let's give it a try. If I type use one, and you will notice that the commands are similar to the MSF console, so to use one of these options, you can just simply just type use one or use two. And since I selected use evasion, as we can see, number one is evasion, it will tell me 41 payloads loaded. And these are our available commands. So we can read information, we can list the payloads, we can use some payload. So let us list our payloads first. And here we can see those 41 payloads. Some of them are coded in Ruby, some of them are coded in Python. We have PowerShell payloads, Perl, Go, CS, C Sharp, C payloads, and we get some auxiliary modules as well. Now, the regular payload that we used in the MSF Venom would most likely be this C meterpreter reverse tcp.py. It is pretty much the same thing. But since we already covered something similar to this inside of the MSF Venom, let us go with a different payload this time. So let's go with the PowerShell payload. Let's select payload number 22, which is PowerShell Meterpreter Reverse TCP. So we can just type use 22. And after you select the payload, it will give you all of the available options that you can set for that payload before you generate it and create it. Here we can see domain, hostname, lhost, local port, min browsers, min processes, min RAM, processors, sleep time, and these options you can use and change as you like. Some of them might actually help you bypass some of the antiviruses, such as, for example, this sleep option right here. Sleep, this amount of seconds. So whatever we set right here, that amount of seconds our payload will sleep after execution before establishing the connection with our listener. So let's set that right away. Let's set sleep to be 20 seconds. What does this mean once again? Well, once the target executes our program, the program will sleep for 20 seconds, it will not do anything, and then after 20 seconds, it will establish the connection with our listener. Another thing that we must set is the local host, and for that, we must know our IP address. And it is .1.12, so I will go right here, type set lhost 192.168.1.12. And if I type generate, as we can see by the available commands right here, to generate the payload, we simply type generate. Press enter. Please enter the base name for the output files, and let's call it power payload. Meaning a PowerShell payload. I will click here enter, and the payload has been created. We can see right here language, PowerShell, payload module is the one that we selected, source code is written to this path right here, and we will notice that it is written inside of the .bat file, and metasploit resource file written to this location right here. And the two things that we are interested in are these two things, the metasploit resource file and the source code. 
Now, this source code, which is .bat, is something that we want to convert to .exe. Now, even though on Windows systems, .bat file is runnable, but this will get triggered by any antivirus program out there, since it is just a basic code that executes commands. It will get triggered by any antivirus. We want to convert it to .exe, and how are we going to do that? Well, we can go to Firefox, and there is a really good tool that is used to convert bad programs to .exe files, and we're going to download it from GitHub. So, if I type right here, bat to exe or b2e github and I navigate right here to the first link I copy the tool we can see that the tool is an actual zip file so we must unzip it as soon as we download it so let's go right here go to the second terminal let's install the tool on our desktop and I will type git clone and then paste the link to the tool after the tool is installed, we can change the directory to the tool and if I type ls, here is the bat to enc converter as a zip file. To unzip it, we can type the command unzip and then bat to exe and it will unzip our file. Clear the screen, type ls and we will get an exe file. Hmm, is this a problem? We know that exe files can only be run inside of a Windows, but remember we have a wine program installed. Let's get a quick reminder of what Wine is. Wine is a program that allows us to execute Windows files inside of Linux. So let's give it a try. If I type Wine and then the program name, press enter, let's give it a few seconds and here it is. It opened the program. So we must set up the program. I will set the language to be English. Click on OK. I accept the agreement. Of course, we're not going to read all of this. Then click on next, click once again on next, and click right here on next. After it, on the last step, we can click on install. We want to check right here launch bat to exe converter and click on finish. And here it is, it opened our bat to exe converter. So now what we want to do is this payload that we generated, which is inside of this location as a dot bat file, we want to convert to exe using this program. So we must open it inside of this program first. To do that, we want to go on to file and then open. Now we must go to this location right here. So let's click on this arrow. Let's go to the slash location, find var, then find lib. Then the next part is whale. So we must go and find the whale program. Here it is. And inside of the output and source, is our power payload.bat. Let's double click it and it will open the code of our payload. Here it is, right here. Now we have some of the options right here that we can change if we want to. You can add an icon by checking this and then selecting the icon from your system, but we're not going to be doing that at the moment. Another thing that you can do, you can set the password, you can change the working directory, you can change the exe format to be something out of these four and I will select to be 64-bit Windows invisible because I'm attacking a 64-bit Windows machine. You can request administrator privileges at the runtime so this is sometimes good if you want your target to run the payload as an administrator but keep in mind once they double click the program if this was selected then they will have to input the administrator password so that is just another step before they actually execute the program. We're not going to be checking that right now Another thing that you can do is this packer, you can enable the UPX compression. But enabling this will just trigger more and more antivirus softwares because UPX is a really known packer and it was used a lot to pack malicious programs. So there is nothing really here that we want to change. And once you set all of the settings to your liking, you can go right here on the converter and then on convert. Here you want to select the name of your payload and we can just call it PS payload, standing for PowerShell payload. It is an exe format, so we can just save it. And if I click on OK, it will create our exe file, as we can see down here. Process finished. Here we can see where our file has been saved. It is in slash var, libvale output source, and then PS payload 
Okay, great. Now the next thing that we must do to check out whether this payload works is to run MSF console. And while it is running MSF console, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the VL directory. So I will open folder. I will go to file system, then go right here to var, navigate to lib, all the way down I will go to whale, then output, source, and here is our PowerShell payload.exe. Let us copy it to our target desktop. So I will just drag it onto the desktop of my target machine, and here is our PowerShell payload.exe. If I go right here, open the Metasploit framework and I go back to the veil first, copy this Metasploit resource file, copy its entire path, and type resource and then paste this. What this is going to do is it will set up the listener automatically that is made for this exact payload. As we can see right here, it started reverse TCP handler on this IP address on this port and it's doing all of that in the background. So all I'm left to do is execute this payload. Now, in this case, we can see the console of this payload, which is something that we don't really want. It only showed for a brief few seconds, but that is something that you can change inside of your path to exe converter. So let's wait for a few seconds, and in just a few seconds, we should receive the meterpreter session. And remember why it is taking so long, is because inside of the whale, we set 20 seconds to wait before establishing connections. And here it is. We got the interpreter session 1 opened. Let's see whether we can execute commands. So if I clear the screen, type sessions, we have one session active, and I will enter it using the dash i command, get user id, and we are on that target machine. We can enter the shell as usual, type who am I, we are this account, and everything seems to work. Great. So we managed to create another type of payload that wasn't the same as in the previous video. And to just prove you that, I can go right here to the virus total, and we can upload the payload to see how many antiviruses managed to detect it. With a regular MSF1 on payload, we got about 53 or 54 detection rate out of 60 antiviruses. Let's see how much we get right now. Let's go and find the payload and it is once again in slash var slash lib slash veil in the output folder and in the source folder here it is i will select it confirm the upload and we should have a much lower detection rate than with the regular msf1 on payload and once again with the usage of this bad to exe converter you can change some of the settings and you might even get lower detection rate but it will never be zero why well, if I just go right here and I delete the entire code and type some random code, which doesn't do pretty much anything, and if I were to convert this code to exe, it will still get detected by a lot of antivirus vendors. You might be asking why, since this right here is not any type of a malicious code. Well, that is because we're using this tool bad to exe converter, and some antivirus vendors find files malicious even though they might not be just because you converted the bad file to an exe. That is pretty much the only reason. And we can see right here, we get a much lower detection rate than with the regular MSF1 on payload. We get 27 out of 67. So we managed to bypass about 20 to 30 more antiviruses just by creating a PowerShell payload with whale instead of using a regular MSF1 on payload. Great, so what did we learn in this video? Well, we covered this tool called whale. You can experiment with other options as well, and you might get even lower detection rate. We also covered this bat to exe tool that we can use to convert the bat files to exe. And we also know that no matter what type of file we convert to exe, it will still get detected by some of the antiviruses just because we used a tool like this. Okay, great. Now that we covered this, we can proceed with our payloads in the next video. See you there.